So, it finally happened. After years of waiting so patiently, I finally got to live my dream and go to Nintendo World at Universal Studios in Japan. However, my camera failed to capture like 99% of the audio, which is actually really cool. Yeah, huge shout out to this microphone in particular. So I, the omnipresent voice of Kiki PJ, will be your tour guide through this theme park theme video. Let's -a go. The first step of the adventure was getting to Osaka. We were up at 6 a.m. for what was roughly a four hour journey in total, but any tiredness we may have felt was soon erased as I laid my eyes on the first of many Nintendo themed stores. I mean, it does match the jacket, doesn't it? So we've basically, we've arrived at Universal. We haven't actually gone into the park yet. We're trying to decide on what headwear we want to wear in the park. Okay, you know what? Actually, I'm convinced. That's, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, we had express passes, so we actually had a bit of time to kill before entering Nintendo World. We treated ourselves to some funky looking Mario desserts from a nearby parlor. They were pancakes filled with a soft, sweet cream. Mine was strawberry and Sophie's was Luigi flavored. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They were really delicious. Like maybe the best thing I ate all day. With our mini Mario themed meals munched, it was onwards to the Mushroom Kingdom. Once we'd gained entry to the park, the first order of business was selecting my power band. I grabbed a toad band to complement the color scheme of the rest of my outfit. Also because toad is the self-proclaimed best. Hi. Not knowing what awaited me on the other side, I plunged into the pipe and got spat out the other end where something pretty jaw-dropping was waiting for me. I was genuinely at a loss for words here. I immediately felt transported back to being 10 years old, standing outside a Peach's castle in Super Mario 64. From one castle to another, we entered Bowser's domain and descended for the Mario Kart ride. I was unable to film on the ride itself, so I'll talk through my thoughts here. The presentation of the castle was five star. It oozed the pageantry that you would come to expect from the almighty king of the Koopas. The ride itself was augmented reality fused with physical set pieces. It was a lot to take in, almost a bit confusing at times, but an absolute blast nonetheless. I accidentally blasted Daisy with so many shells. Sorry, Daisy. The other ride in the park is Yoshi's Adventure, which was a lot more calm, that's for sure. We're in the Yoshi's Adventure line, and there are some sneaky Pikmin up there. It was a beautiful scenic experience reminiscent of Yoshi's story and Yoshi's Island. The ride was almost a little too calm. In true Super Mario World fashion, I would have loved Yoshi vaulting over a pit at the end, only to be dismounted mid-air, falling to their demise whilst the rider lands safely on a platform. And that is why I don't design park rides. Hunger struck once again, and whilst we were hanging out in the prehistoric era, we scavenged for a turtle shell bun filled with hot teriyaki noodles and a cool creamy mango float, just like the dinosaurs used to eat. It was a very tasty snack. Not as good as the pancakes from earlier, but enough to give me my second wind, my next very important mission. Aside from the rides, there are secret challenges to complete scattered throughout the park that award you with keys. I already collected one key, but needed two more to get to the final boss. Koopa! Sweet. 
so I began by defusing a bomb with the Dream Team, me, a hardcore Mario fanatic who had fabricated his own Mario merchandise, and a small child. Then I smashed some clocks to stop this piranha plant from waking up. Me and my team were once again successful, which meant... With all three keys in my pocket, it was time to storm Bowser Jr.'s castle and defeat him in single-handed combat. It was a dangerous mission filled with traps and treachery, but I would not be beaten so easily. I spent this video dressed basically as Mario, so I thought I would change into Green Mario. When I first heard they were opening a Nintendo theme park, I knew I had to go. I always imagined myself there at launch, December 2020, which, as we all know by now, that could not happen. Nintendo has just been such a big part of my childhood. Whenever things were tough over the past few years, I would just remind myself, PJ, you will go to Nintendo World. And I know that's really dumb, I know that sounds so stupid, but, you know, it helped me push through and get through the hard times. Just because I knew how excited I would be to go. And so yeah, now I've been, and I loved it. I really, really loved it. I could have spent hours there soaking in the atmosphere. It was such a special place. We didn't get to do everything. We didn't go to the Toad Cafe, I never got my Mario burger, or this princess peach cake that looks incredible. And so I would love to go back sometime, but I would also definitely want to see some more attractions. Imagine the Donkey Kong area with like a barrel blast ride or some kind of a minecart ride. That would be so, oh my God, that'd be so good. And the whole place could be jungle themed. You could have banana treats, like frozen bananas covered in chocolate and nuts. Oh. It would be so good. So good. So yes, what an absolute nostalgic treat that was. I hope you enjoyed this video. I did my very best to capture the experience, despite my camera losing all of my audio. Please do give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and also subscribe to the channel for more videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Okie dokie. Who's Cap?